I'm Jono Buchanan. Now, if you don't know me by now, then you'll never, ever, ever know me. Um, and I think what you probably do know is that I like random. I like things that just have the power to surprise and delight, I hope, in ways that are completely unpredictable. And what's interesting about making YouTube videos about the idea of something unpredictable is that often the kind of, is this a good idea for a video yields a musical result that's totally different to the one that I end up making when the cameras are rolling. Let's see what happens this time. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a kind of top based percussion loop out of the existing drum loop that exists for this track. And before we go any further, we should hear this track. It goes like this. Okay, so here is our piece of music, and of course, it's blue. That means this part is the drums. And what I want to do is to take this drum loop and to see if I can make something unusual and that's going to kind of add to the top end driven part of what this drum mix might be. And the way that I'm going to do that to start with is I'm going to sample this loop into slices. Now, this is straightforward enough. I'm going to simply just take this loop, take it down to the bottom, drag it left, and take it into the quick sampler. And when I do that, the quick sampler will uh, sample it into slices. Now, of course, we can see already behind this sample instrument that the original loop is still here. It's still going to play. So immediately we are adding to what's there rather than replacing it. And it's also fair to say that the slices are now going to be sliced up from key C1 upwards. So what I mean by that is that if I play C1, which is here, and we come up through the keyboard, we're going to hear the individual slices, which I think finished there. That's the last one. So I've got a keyboard range of uh, two octaves and two extra notes. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to not worry too much about trying to put kicks where kicks are and snares where snare are, snarts, snare, blah, 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 blah. There we go. I'm going to even just stop that sentence there because it's too hard to say. I'm not going to try and match the individual drum hits to their positions in the original loop. That would have just been an easier thing to say, and now I've said it. What I'm going to do instead is to close this instrument down altogether, and I'm going to just, with the pencil tool, create a running series of 16th notes from C1 upwards. So let's just get the magnification to a sort of, uh, or the zoom, to a sort of level, which is going to make it easy enough to work to. And I think once I have created four of those, it might be easier to select them, repeat them, which is just Command and R, and then to transpose them. And then if I select all of those and repeat those and transpose those two, then suddenly we've got 12 notes. So what I've now got is a running series of 16th notes based on the slices that were chopped up by the sampler. By itself, it sounds like this. Now, because some of those slices were longer than a 16th note, even though we can kind of hear that it's come from that original drum beat, it doesn't sound exactly the same, and that's fine. That would be an interesting thing to try in its own right. Immediately now, we've got a version of what this drum loop kind of loosely is, but it's different. But I want more random than that. So what I'm now going to do is to actually duplicate the length of this bit of MIDI so that it becomes twice the length. I'm going to close the um, piano roll down for a second and join those together. That's just Command and J. And then what I'm going to do is sort of just make sure that I am going as uh, up to the highest note I can. I seem to remember that D3 is the highest individual slice. So what I'm going to do is to make sure that I'm transposing these. Let me turn off MIDI out so that I stop generating silly noises. So now what I've got is two lots of this ascending 16th note to include all of the possible notes that could be within this drum pattern. In other words, there is now a note for every single slice that was detected by the sampler. Still not going to be that random because I'm still moving in this kind of recycle Rexy kind of style sliced chopped up thing. What I want to do for full random is to come to functions menu here where I have an opportunity to come into MIDI transform. Now we've looked at MIDI transform in a couple of different ways across different chapters in the past and it's definitely useful 
to look at it in the context of humanizing. The idea of taking an absolutely fixed series of placements of notes and humanizing them. In other words, slightly changing where they start and stop, changing velocity. In other words, doing all of the things that a human being does when they play individual notes. That's not what I'm here for this time. What I want is random pitch, velocity, and length. Now, what this is going to do, as you might expect, is to take all of the notes that are within my sequence and it's going to allocate a random pitch to them, a random velocity, which is going to create variation as well, and a random length. And because these slices have now been sampled and therefore are triggerable over MIDI, that length is going to be an interesting thing to vary as well. So what I'm going to do is to select this particular option and up comes what appears to be a terrifying window. But let's not be terrified. We're not those people. It's okay. Let me talk you through it. What's going to happen here is that we've got separate categories for pitch, velocity, and length, the three things that we're going to randomize. And because what I've done is to create a sequence which includes all of the possible notes that exist within the original collection of notes I put together, the pitches are only going to be randomized within that range. Now, the reason why that matters is that I don't want pitches that are at D5 or A6 because I don't have a note slice allocated to those particular pitches. Now, if I did want to introduce the idea that maybe some of these notes might deliberately get re-pitched to a note where there wasn't a sound and therefore I got silence, that might be quite an interesting thing to do, where suddenly I'd be introducing notes that didn't actually exist and therefore would produce a little musical rest. That's worth potentially experimenting with, but I want the whole pattern to play a note. So I'm going to randomize only within the range of notes where my slices exist. The next thing I can do is to randomize velocity for every single new slice that's going to be created too. And again, I've got a range option here. I can either go from absolutely the lowest possible velocity, which will be 1 through to 127, or if I want to keep things audible the whole way through, I might choose something a little bit more in the middle, like the one that's being suggested, 65 through to 127. If I wanted to change this, I can just simply click on either of those values and drag in either direction. And interestingly, the, um, the range of potential random slices you can see is sort of demonstrated below. So in other words, if I took velocities all up to 127, there would be no variation. They'd all be full volume. As I drag down, we begin to see what a random collection of velocities might look like. But because it's going to be random, it's not going to look exactly like that. Because every time I change that, the kind of individual sort of chunks of this, the blocks of this change. So, but it's a sort of an overview, if you like. And then what I have a chance to do is to also think about how I might change length. Now then, what does this mean? Well, what we've got is four separate numbers. And the first of those is a bar. The second one is a whole crotchet beat or a quarter note. The next one is a 16th note beat or a semiquaver. And the last one is the number of frames that exist within a 16th note, which um, is 238. There are 238 places that I can go within each individual 16th note. So in other words, what this means is at the moment, the randomization of the length of each note is going to be a maximum of one 16th note. And the shortest note that there's going to be is 120 238ths of a 16th note. So in other words, if I want notes that are potentially unbelievably short, what I can do is to take that number down to something which is even smaller. So now the maximum note length is going to be this one and the minimum is going to be 90 frames. When I'm done, what I can do is to select and operate. Now, what that means is it's going to select all of the notes that are in that sequence and it's going to operate on all of them. Sounds serious, doesn't it? Alternatively, if I want to, I can just select a few of them and operate only. But I want to select them all and operate on all of them. And when I do that, all hell is going to break loose behind it. Our nice little musical pattern um, uh, is gone to have been replaced by notes that, as you can see, only exist within the range where we've got slices. The, you can see that the uh, velocity has been randomized as well. And we can see that there are some note lengths that have been changed as well. By itself, that sounds like this. which is quite fun, isn't it? So what I've now got is a little beat loop, which is doing its thing based on one bar. And of course, what we could do would be to simply uh, repeat that. So if I wanted this beat loop to play exactly as it is right now, four separate times under the current track, that would sound like this. And 
that's producing some really nice variation. Now, I mentioned at the top of the video that what I wanted to do was to kind of use this loop to create some top end stuff. And of course, at the moment, the randomly sliced bits are as likely to select low end content, bits of kick drum, for instance, bits of snare, as they are to select only the hats and the kind of upper frequency content of those other sounds too. So if I only want this to be a top end loop, I'm gonna to need to do some processing. So let's do that next. I'm gonna put a loop around this sound. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some filtering to it. So we can add the auto filter. And what I'm going to do is to make this a high pass filter. I'm going to make it resonance. And I'm also going to take this opportunity to introduce some extra variation to it as well. In other words, I'm going to introduce some LFO. I'm going to set up a, um, a sort of undulating shape and I want that to happen over two bars. So what's now going to happen is using a high pass filter, we're going to sweep up and down from the highest frequencies to around I don't know, a little bit over halfway through the entire frequency spectrum for this sound. What I'm also going to do is to introduce some stereo width to this by changing the kind of phase values as well. I've made a video about that, so go and have a look at the auto filter video if you want to. Now we're going to get some kind of liquid movement in this sound. I really like that. Now at the moment, what we've got, of course, is the same pattern which we've created using the kind of randomizing, but it's repeating in two bar chunks. What might happen if we joined all of those together and we went back in? So in other words, if I was to take this collection of notes, where of course we've got a two bar pattern, and if I was to come back to functions, and if I was to come back to MIDI transform, and once again, we randomized pitch and velocity and length, and we kept all of these values the same. Remember, these notes are all still within their range because we haven't expanded beyond it. We're going to re-randomize velocity, which means that some of them are going to be different, and we're going to re-randomize length, which means they're going to be different too. Once again, let's select and operate. So now we've got something different again, which means that every bar is now going to be different. Let's hear that. Okay, I think we're getting somewhere with this. What I'm going to do now, in order to make the kind of sonic difference between these two sounds a little bit more extreme, we could add, for example, maybe a little bit of pedal board and maybe get a bit of, I don't know, a different sort of sonic quality into this. Let's try a bit of fuzz, for instance, just to really make it obvious these are different. I'm ready with the level control, just in case it's all a bit much. Um, sorry that I destroyed your hearing. I didn't know. I didn't know. Look, it turns out that no volume is the right amount of volume for the grip pedal. Who knew? Uh, so, uh, sorry about that. Bit late now, isn't it? Sorry. Um, if he's feeling nice, it could be that Will made an adjustment there in the edit. Oh, it's almost like the future and the past and the present are all merging when I say something like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of solo mode. Let's have a listen to this loop in the context of everything for a moment.
Okay, so this is bringing us a kind of amazing industrial overtone, and yes, I know it's too loud. But there's one thing I want to do before I just simply turn it down, which is that, of course, we could have this trigger off one of the other sounds in the track. And what I mean by that is, let's suppose I was to take this busy bass sound and use it as a trigger for that other sound. The way that I would do that would be to come to Dynamics and find the noise gate. And then what I could do using a side chain would be to come to the audio file called Busy Bass, so the track that is the Busy Bass track. And now what's going to happen is that this gate is only going to open, and therefore this sound, this collection of randomized beats, is only going to play when the Busy Bass part plays. And if I wanted to speak a bit more quickly, I might take the attack time down to zero and maybe even introduce a bit of look ahead, which means the noise gate is allowed to know that this sound is coming. A bit of internal processing there. But what that's going to do is it's going to make this loop just speak immediately. And what I might also do would be to add a little bit of release time to it, so that rather than just absolutely slamming shut, it just sticks around and has a little bit of a fade out for maybe, I don't know, a quarter of a second or so before it disappears again. That would sound like this. Actually, I think I like it just stopping. I think I like it better like that. Let's have a listen to it with everything else. I think that's a lot of fun. So what we've got now is this brand new bit of extra high-end um, sort of percussion. And yes, I know the pedal board's doing a lot. What we could do just for a moment would be to take this grip pedal out. I'm interested to hear it just with the fuzz. Well, that's definitely a much more subtle effect, so it's up to you to decide which way you want to go. But what we've done is to take a drum loop, a part that already exists within our track, we've sampled it, sliced it, randomized those slices in terms of their pitch, their length, and their velocity. We've then created a new pattern out of them, we've processed that pattern, and then what we've done is to create a relationship between that pattern and one other part of the mix. If you were just to play this track to somebody now, you would kind of imagine that they thought that that little busy bass part contained some bass and this extra stuff too, because those two parts have now been sort of wedded together. And of course, it's really the randomization of logic that's done that rather than us being too strategic about it. Imagine this with pitched instruments as well. Imagine making a pitched pattern-based sequence, turning that into a MIDI region and applying this kind of processing. And remember also that what you could also do with this beat loop would be to bounce it down with these effects try it with a different set of effects, re-randomize it, and just mine all of your favorite little moments that happen through that randomization and just use those tiny little bits. Loads of ideas for places where you can take this kind of randomization and think about the ways in which it can sort of just elevate your productions to unpredictable places.